Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's video is all about using wooden cigar boxes. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit the notification button so that YouTube will notify you when I upload my next video. And here's a quick peek. My first box is a bridal box, something you would give to someone who's getting married. I painted the outside with Waverly's chalk paint in the color ink, and then I'll be painting over it with Dixie Belle sea glass. And this would be a box that a bride could put special mementos in, or maybe a special handkerchief that was given to her that was passed down from maybe her grandmother, or any kind of special things from her wedding. Now this box is pretty narrow, so you wouldn't be able to put anything big in it but it's more for inspiration. And the outside is painted sea glass. Now on the inside, it's painted a different color and you'll see why soon. So I painted the bottom of the box with Dixie Belle soft pink. Now the lid of the inside of the box has that same wording on it. So I painted it with that black again and I'll cover it back up with soft pink but I don't think that pink would have covered up that wording very well. So do you have any spe special mementos from your wedding if you're married? I know I don't have anything, but I know this would be something really special for a new bride. Now on the outside, I'm gonna be putting a piece of rice paper and the company that makes it is called Stamperia and I bought it off of Etsy. And it's really sweet, and it's more the inspiration for this box than anything. And it's a picture of a prince and his princess riding away into the sunset. And up in the top right corner of that piece of rice paper um, has some wording in it, and it starts with, and they lived happily ever after. So I'm using my water pen to go ahead and isolate the parts of the rice paper that I want to put on the box. Now, if you've never used rice paper before, it's a really thicker paper. Um, it holds up really well. And so um, I'm using the water pen to go ahead and pull out the part of that sheet that I want to put on the box. And then I still go back and trim it some more um, once I decide what I'm gonna put on. Now, the wonderful thing about rice paper is that um, it holds up so well, and so I'll start by putting it down with a little bit of glue, and then I'll take it from the bottom up and hold it up and paint some of the medium, that I, you, whatever you're going to use to transfer it on with. Um, I'm using liquid patina, which is a really good product, and it's not thick. And I paint it on the back, and then I'll lay that part back down and brush that down, and, and it really is nice because it doesn't have any wrinkles in it. And then I'll pick up that bottom part again and brush them on that. And then I will lay that back down. But it's really sturdy. What I like about rice paper is that even after you lay it down, before that glue sets up, you can go ahead and move it around just a little bit if you want to. So I'm brushing that all down, and then I'm going to go back all around the edges and make sure it's all glued down. Now in the top right-hand corner is the part of the rice paper that starts with, and they lived happily ever, of, ever, <laughs> happily ever after. Um, and then in the bottom right corner of the top of the box um, is something special that I'm going to put on at the end. Now, I know y'all find this hard to believe, but I didn't decoupage anything on the side, but it's only because the box is not very deep at all. But I try to always do something extra when I'm working with these boxes, and you'll find that on the inside of the box. But I just think this is such a sweet little rice paper that could be used for a bride. Or you could even make something special um, a baby box for someone who's getting ready to have a baby where they could put maybe even like the little bracelet that the baby wears in the hospital. 
Okay, so for the inside of the box, I've lost some of the footage and I apologize for that, but I'm using the IOD Olive Crest Mold and I'm using DAS, D-A-S Clay. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not. And I'm just using the two little swirly parts on the side of that mold and also in the center of that mold, you'll see that little oval medallion. I'll also be using that as well. Now the IOD molds, they have that little micro rim on the side. Um, so some people prefer that because um, it's easier to keep the clay from pulling out on the outer edges of where you would want it to be. Um, but I use molds so much that I've adapted to it really well. Um, and it's just a matter of using your patience and taking your time and pushing it down. And then even though I've pushed it all in, I like to use like a gift card or a credit card to make it real flat on the back. I just think it molds better when I know that it's flat. And then I'll go and I will use air dry clay in that metal piece in the, I'm sorry, that middle piece of the medallion and put that on the inside of the box. And I'll put it up at the top. Now, you can see that wording just a little bit, but fortunately, the pieces of the air dry clay covered it up. Even after painting it black, it still came through a little bit. And one thing I forgot to mention was that the paint was still a little bit too pink, so I dry brushed white on the inside. And so I'm just kind of moving it around until I'm happy with how it looks and the way that I want the little swirly parts to go. I'm not sure. There might be a technical word for those, but I'm just going to call it swirly things. And then I'm going to take it off and paint it white, and then I'll glue it back on with tight bond glue. Now, one of the things that I want to make sure I mention is that there is a little piece of a coordinating rice paper that I then glue onto that medallion and its little um, wedding rings that are intertwined. In the bottom right corner, I'm going to be using a stamp I found on Amazon that has scripture on it. If you've never used a clear stamp, when you first get it, you need to use a little bit of sandpaper so that the ink can grip onto the stamps a little bit better. And I'm going to be stamping this onto a white napkin. And this came as a suggestion from a viewer. And the scripture comes from Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 4, that states, I found the one my heart loves. And I, this is such a perfect scripture if you're getting ready to get married. And then the little flowers that I'm putting around it, around the napkin, are also from that coordinating piece of rice paper. And one thing I don't show you in this video is in the top left-hand corner is an, also a piece of coordinating rice paper that goes with it, and it's a picture of a wedding cake. So do you have somebody that's getting married that really would enjoy something like this? Or do you have some special memories? that you would be able to put in a box. I just think it's a really sweet box. And there's the wedding cake up there on the top left-hand corner. Now on the outside, in that right corner, <clears throat> I didn't know what to put, so this was a suggestion of my mom. So I am actually putting the date um, of when my husband and I got married, which was October 14th, 1978 which when you add up the numbers, that's almost 45 years. Now, a, a viewer suggested putting resin in with the little dropper. And the only one that I had came from like my granddaughter's little box of Tylenol. Now, I want you to know I'm not gonna be using this again. I'm actually gonna throw it away and get another box of Tylenol just in case she needs some when she's here. But um, the little eyedropper is really good because this is the IOD mold called Harper, and it's the lowercase letters, and it's really good um, to be able to use because those little numbers are so, so small. And then because I had to have an extra number, I used a glue gun, 
and I wanted to show you this if you can also use hot glue to put in these molds but I will let you know the hot glue does need to be a higher temperature than normal and this hot glue gun actually reaches 220 degrees so because I'm used to using it I don't burn myself and so once I take them out I will go ahead and paint them with white and then I'll be going over it with gilding wax gold um, to add some sparkle to it. But it's something that's just very um, muted and it's not too shiny. And that second one is the hot glue, so you can kind of see what the difference is. The next box is actually inspired by one of my viewers who mentioned she liked Wedgwood China. So if I'm not going to mention her name, but if you're watching, I want you to know I did this because of what you mentioned. Um, and the box is painted with Dixie Belle Dusty Blue. And um, I'm also missing a little bit of footage on this, so I apologize. But the middle part of the box, I'm using the IOD Cameo Mold. And remember, if you're going to be using a mold, put cornstarch in it, and it helps to release that air-dry clay much better. And then I'll be using a redesign with Prima mold for the other parts, the little swirly parts around the edge. And I actually have to have four of those pieces, one for each corner. And after I got them molded, then I actually took them off and painted them white and then glued them on. Now, I actually looked up Wedgwood China, and one of the things that they do is the trim around the china can be just as decorative as on the inside. So this is another part of that redesign with Prima Mold, and this is just a little braided trim, and I will actually put it on all four sides of the box, and I actually still put it on the lid because when you... If you put it further on down, it doesn't look right and it doesn't show up as well. And I go ahead and make four pieces of this to put on the outside of the box. And I go ahead and glue it down, or I'm sorry, tape it down with painter's tape so that it won't move around. And it sets up pretty fast. And once I know it's set up, then I'll remove it. But I'm also doing using that same technique, pushing it down with my fingers, and then using a gift card to kind of smooth out the edges. And I don't end up having to use all four pieces, so I kind of pull, cut it off, and I'll um, go back and remold it. Now I did paint the bottom of the box. Um, I just did that at the end. And this is that braided trim at the top. But it does, it looks like Wedgwood China. And I know that extra piece on the side is makes it a little bit fancier, but I think it really mimics Wedgwood China. On the inside of the box, I painted it white, and I actually found a napkin that had a little blue flower, and I decoupaged that to the inside of the box. Because, well, you know me, when I'm making a box and decorating it, I always like to put something on the inside because I just think it's so special, especially if you give it to somebody and they open up the box and they're like, oh, well, gracious, look, there's something on the inside. And I think those little extra special touches is what really bumps it up a lot. And so that's why I always like to put something on the inside. So I go ahead and isolate those flowers with my water pen, and then I still go back and tear it, the little white parts off real easy because I don't want any extra of that napkin on there. I really just want the flowers. And then I end up getting another flower so that there's three flowers on the inside in, instead of two because, you know, in decorating, things look better with odd numbers. And so this could, box could be used for anything. It actually reminds me a lot of a music box that I actually own. My husband bought me a long time ago. But if you are that person who mentioned that, thank you, because I really like the way the box turned out. So I hope you watched this video. 
but you're a regular subscriber, so I'm I'm thinking you're probably going to see this. And I use the liquid patina to put that napkin down. But isn't that so pretty? Now the next box, look at that transfer real quick, because I forget to show you me putting it on. It's actually a very old transfer, and I can't remember where I got it. Now this box is a little different. I am not going to paint the inside of the box, because... I'm gonna be giving it to my niece. She is a master gardener. She is so, so talented. Um, she's a lot like my mother-in-law who um, had always had a big garden and actually sold vegetables a long time ago when the kids were growing up. Now the box had kind of an engraved part on it, so I used wood filler to um, fill that in and then I painted it with a Waverly color called agave. I think I'm saying it right, because the transfer that's on the front of the box that talks about seeds and bulbs, um, part of that is that same color, so I matched it up. So I'm only painting the outside of the box and the bottom of the box. Now the difference for this box for the lid is because it slides in, those little edges that slide into the box, I do not paint them because um, if I paint them, that paint would stick it, would make it stick when you were trying to push it in. So that's the only part of the lid on, on the outside that I don't paint, but you don't see it because you're sliding that lid into the um, those little grooves. And this is part of that transfer. It's so old and I wish I could remember where I got it, but it's the seeds and bulbs. And then on the side, I'm using an Iron Orchid Design um, transfer, and it actually came out, I think it was a spring release, and it's called Malo's Pages, and it just has all these different pictures in it. It's got butterflies, mushrooms, bugs, fish, all kinds of stuff. And so what I did was I went through it, and I picked out some vegetables that coordinated with the front transfer of the box. So... But please don't ask me which what these things are, because I can't always tell you. I know one of them are green peas, is, which is my favorite. So um, what's your favorite vegetable? I know that. My husband, we always have a big garden. He works it because, well, he's better at it than I am. And he always makes sure that he has lots of tomatoes, and he um, grows okra and squash and... Oh gosh, I can't remember all he does. Um, we also like to grow broccoli. But these are just some little transfers of some coordinating vegetables. And I put three transfers or three um, vegetable transfers on either side of the box. But I don't put anything on the top of the box because in all honesty, I think that that would just be too much. And also, I want to make sure I say that um, when I sealed these boxes this time, I did not use a flat finish sealer. Um, I decided to use a gloss finish because especially the two first boxes were a little bit dressier and I think thought they looked better with a gloss sealer. So I went on and used it for all of them. And I used Rust-Oleum spray sealer and I used the gloss on all three of them. But I think the vegetables really kind of make it on the side. So here we go. Here's all of the pieces together. We've got our bridal box. And then we're going to have our wedge wood, wedge wood. Gosh, that's so hard to say. Wedge wood box that reminds me of also like a little music box. And then we've got our seed box. So tell me something. Which of these boxes are your favorite today? I can't really say which one is my favorite, but I sure do like that blue wedge, Wedgwood box. I just like the way that the white pops against that dusty blue color. And if you're my sister-in-law, please do not tell my niece that I'm going to be giving her this box if you're watching the video. But I just think that's so sweet. And I think she'll think it's special. But she is an incredible gardener. 
And these are just some old seed packets that I had that I put in these little spools. So which one is your favorite? I like all of them, but once again, I think the wedge wood china is one of my favorite. And would you make this bridal box or would you make a box for something else? You could even use it for maybe a child's school box. Wouldn't that be cool if in the fall they went to school with a brand new um, pencil box that would be something special made just for them? And friends, if I don't say it enough, I want you to know that I appreciate you watching and liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Thanks so much.